Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this, uh, what is it, Thursday night? Almost feels like a Friday. Friday's right around the corner, not even joking. Coming up here in just a matter of hours. So, yeah, it is about 10.52 uh, p.m. California time here, August uh, 31st. It's the last day of August. Goodness, good riddance to summer. Um latest earthquake activity 1.6 up into the pacific northwest and that's kind of where we're starting out here tonight all right we're starting out here in an area uh called mount saint helens now earlier here in the last oh half an hour or so maybe a little bit further back we had some uh, earthquake activity showing up on the Mount St. Helen seismograph station there and that was from a 1.6 and uh, looks like maybe there was a smaller earthquake in there as well now this is a little sequence of earthquake activity that's been, been occurring up here at Mount St. Helen so we're gonna look into that a little bit deeper nothing above a 2.5 by the way uh, supposedly I thought we had a 2.7 though hold on did they did they make that disappear Maybe it was just a 2.1. Let's see what we got here. This is the last seven days, all magnitudes, supposedly. But I'm going to show you guys that this is not the all magnitudes map here. Uh, I'll show you the seismograph station here in a little bit. Looks like a 2.4. I, oh goodness, I think that was a 2.7. It looks like maybe they downgraded that, uh, that earthquake. Either way, that's the largest in this little sequence of earthquake activity here in the last week at Mount St. Helens Volcano in Washington. Now, I know it's been pretty quiet, us living our, our, our beautiful lives up here, you know, Pacific Northwest, wherever you're at, not having to worry about active volcanoes. But there's going to be a time when that's not going to be the case. And what we look for is maybe some earthquake activity. Right now, 25 earthquakes, probably double that. Uh, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. But that 2.4, 3.7 kilometers deep. Uh, we did have a 1.6 in the last hour. Now that earthquake struck at negative 1.8 on the southeastern flank here of Mount St. Helens Volcano. Now, let's see if that has been reviewed by, you know, one of the professionals here hold on stand by for a second has not been reviewed yet so we do not have a an official status on that on that uh, earthquake but it did show up pretty nicely on the seismograph station along with a subsequent sh uh smaller earthquake we've seen it on the seismograph stations there those that were watching the live stream seen it and i'm i'm just kind of here to report on it so earthquake activity let's see if they have reviewed this 2.4 reviewed okay somebody studied this somebody with one of those uh you know those big old degrees on their wall made a paper studied this and reviewed it found it to be uh, at 3.7 kilometers deep at a ma uh, magnitude 2.4 uh down at that range there is very consistent where where we look at magma Most of these earthquakes are occurring roughly around three kilometers deep. Some of them a little bit deeper, about five kilometers deep or so for uh, some of these sh uh, these smaller earthquakes, so to speak. But the majority of these are roughly between uh, three and five, but some somewhat deep as well. I mean, seven kilometers for that one. So what is going on? What's going on here at Mount St. Helens Volcano? Is there something we need to worry about? Um, you know, it's obviously, I think this has been one of the most recent active eruptions out here in terms of volcanic activity here across the Cascades back in the eighties, right? Uh, yeah, that was a little bit too little to remember it, but I remember my parents, uh, picking up some ash, uh, Mount St. Helens ash, you know, it was all over the place and it was a, a well-documented event. So is it stirring up right now? Goodness. Uh, let's check out the most recent information activity here from the USGS, right? These, these are the folks in charge. These are the guys that, uh, that we pay taxpayer money here to keep our equipment up and running 
and documenting volcanic activity. So let's see what these guys are reporting here with our equipment, right? This is our equipment, taxpayer money here. So let's go ahead and check out our GPS station. Is it working? Oh goodness, that one's not working. GPS displacement, is this one working? Whoa, that's about three years old. Maybe this one up here. This has got to be working. 2020. Another three-year-old. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Hold on a second here. What's this one? This one's working. Looks like that is slightly working here. 2023. So we got one out of ten stations up there. Come on, USGS. Let's get with the program. Okay. I know you guys may be short-staffed, maybe short-handed, but... This is public information, and we, the people that pay your salary, right? Your salary, and this equipment is ours. Let's get it working. The latest uh, information here, 2023. Notice these, um, there's little seasonal changes up here. This is a GPS raw up data, up tilt so to speak you know inflation and it looks like 2023 here at this beginning time frame we're looking at uh, a little bit of a spike here but it's hard to uh, hard to see if this is above normal or not it doesn't look like it here on the graph these are seasonal changes uh, it could be due to saturation of the snow melt from the summer season it could be who knows what just you know general subsidence but looking at this activity it looks like there's a little bit of uptick here but nothing out of the norm but th again this is only one station that's outside of the normal area of monitoring I, I mean i haven't really seen anything that's uh this is 2020 21 2022 old data um you know it's uh, it, come on let's get this going let's get this working it does not take an army to go out there and fix an equipment out there. Come on, USGS, let's get this going. So uh, air temperature, th these are working. But again, if you think about this, um, any of these at the summit or area or the crater area at the Mount St. Helens area would only show seismic or volcanic unrest if there's indeed magma underneath this area. But that doesn't show, you know, inflation around the volcano that could show swelling, so to speak, the precursors of volcanic eruption. So, you know, it's this is not relevant because we know it's not it's currently not erupting, but we want to know what's going on below the surface here. And these GPS stations here. Um, should play a part on what's going on here. We should be able to access this, but we're looking at three years of, well, your taxpayer money, um, you know, not working out there. Come on, guys. This I, I don't want to have to email the USGS, but it looks like maybe some of us have to email the USGS and get these uh, equipment here working. I mean, really, what a waste of time. Why do you guys even have this stuff up here if it's not working, right? Seismograph station's not working. Uh, you click on this. There's a past 24 hours. So this is a little bit of activity working. Holy moly, it's a miracle. All right. Past 24 hours of seismic activity. What do you guys see? Do you guys see one earthquake up here? Because, okay, but uh, let's, let's go here. One day. This is a one day data. One earthquake being reported. What do you guys see up here? Last 24 hours. You guys see anything? Is this all flatlined? Is this completely squashed data? Or do you see activity stirring up here at Mount St. Helens? <laughs> I would have to uh, agree with myself on the later. The latter. Not the latter, but the later, so to speak. I see elevated earthquake activity and I'm really concerned about this this kind of looks like some type of magma movement below the surface similar to what we see at the uh, Kilauea volcano 
See that? You guys see that? Stirred up elevated activity, wide width of uh, seismic signature. Earthquake activity obviously is going to look like this, this, this here, maybe this. That looks like an earthquake activity, but I am seeing... Well, let's go back here. Hold on. Let's double check, okay? I don't want to jump ahead of the gun here. This was... This was... Uh, it's pretty recent. So, let's see what we got for weather conditions, okay? Because I don't want to jump the gun and say that there's volcanic activity without checking the potential for weather. So, let's go to the windy map up here. See what we got. We do have a low pressure system building out here. There's high pressure multiple high pressures out here but there's going to be there's actually going to be a formation of a low pressure system building out here across the pacific northwest here uh probably right now or maybe soon but i want to do i, I want to pull up the wind gust up here uh there is some wind out of the north but uh you know uh, yeah, let's see here hold on a second that was probably about five six hours ago not uh not really a big deal. Let me just... I gotta double check this, folks. Let me bring back the last six hours. Was there any storming up here? There's some rain out here in Washington, it looks like. Right? That's uh, Morton, Packwood area, Eatonville. No, uh, looks like northeast of the Mount St. Well... There's Toledo. I'm trying to think where we're at. Right here, right? Mount St. Helens. That's the volcano that we're looking at. That's going to be right here. So let's look at the last six hours. See what stirred up out here um, in that time frame. You know, sometimes wind, rainfall can uh, definitely be can have an effect on seismograph stations out there. I don't see any major thunderstorms out there across that area. Or even any thunderstorms, but who's to say that wind was not greater up there at that level, right? Uh, right now, wind gust around the Mount St. Helens area, very minimal. Um, earlier, let's see here, 1 p.m. I don't see any significant wind events out there um, prior to this data, but there was. It l looks like there was some, uh, some rainfall out there, so... With that being said, um, it looks like it's it's hard to say, folks, but it definitely looks like some earthquake activity stirring up out there. Obviously, we see the earthquake activity. There's a bunch of it. This here is what I'm more concerned about. If this is maybe magma movement underneath the surface, and it's hard to tell because we don't really have any accurate GPS stations out there. Uh, some minimal, you know, but this is stirred up recently, so we don't have any like the past couple days of activity. And the gas emissions there really probably wouldn't show anything unless it's uh, really close to the surface. Uh, so, goodness, this is going to keep me up all night here seeing this. Either way, Earthquake activity, it looks like, has been um, somewhat elevated there. And more so than what this map is showing. This is the last 24 hours, supposedly, of earthquake activity there from the USGS. So we'll continue to watch that. That's one seismograph station there. Let me see if we can... I wish we had access more of these. Um, uh, hold on a second here. Is this it? That's as close as we're going to get. There's the gas again. Um... Let's see what we got for temperatures. There's a little bit of differential temperature uh, activity there across this gas station. Notice that little rapid activity stirring up here in the last couple days. Um, let's see here. That station's not working. I wish it was. How about this one? Yeah, that's... Yeah, okay, there we go. Nothing going on here, folks. Move along. <laughs> this GPS station again from 2020. So, you know, when it comes to monitoring a volcano, you think these things would be 
um, up to speed, up to date, up to information here. This is 2020 again. It's, you know, come on. Get with the program, guys. I don't know who's in charge of this, but I think we should email them. They're at the uh, Mount St. Helens monitoring station and uh, get, you know, get them moving. This is um, our equipment out here. This is taxpayer equipment. We pay for this equipment and it's not working. We pay these people to take care of this equipment and to give us insights on what's going on at the volcanoes. But obviously they're not doing the job right. So, I, you know, I, I can't really do anything else. Uh, if it stirs up anymore, uh, guess who's going to be driving up there? It'd be me to find out what's going on. Let me go back here to the uh, other seismograph station up here. Um, Mount St. Helens. Let me see if I can access it through this one. Now, it, it's kind of weird because this is the same seismograph station here that I just clicked on. But on the... There's that two-point... Uh, wait a minute, not two-pointer. That's the... Uh, what just kicked up? 1.6. Literally within the last hour. There it is. That's a 1.6 showing up up there. So it doesn't look like there's anything kicking up above that, so to speak. But these little other ones here, little other smaller spikes here, are definitely showing some elevated earthquake activity there. And this has been just an, a general trend here at Mount St. Helens over the past week. So uh, definitely above background levels. Um... I don't think they have anything going on far as the uh, updates go. It looks like nothing being reported. And if you were to go to the uh, volcano hazards far as Mount St. Helens go specifically, you will find out that it's still green. There's been no updates to it. Uh, nothing. Nobody really talking about the earthquake activity here. But... Uh, Definitely something to watch here. As it is an active volcano, obviously, right? Obviously, the past changed the world, but we're not really interested in the past. We're interested in what's going on right now. And that was that was an article put out 2023. Uh, most recent eruption, obviously, back in 1980. There was a small little minor elevated activity in 2004 to 2008. I remember that. Um, so I, I think, if anything, this would definitely be one of our more um, active volcanoes here to watch. All right. So we'll keep an eye on that, folks. I didn't mean to spend too much time on that, but it's definitely of interest out here, right? It's in the States and it's in the Cascades. And, of course, Mount St. Helens has had an eruptive past far as earthquake activity goes here across the globe or the map pretty good uh, cluster going on here of deep earthquake activity across the fiji area yesterday and today the latest one of 5.0 your tonga 164 kilometers deep but notice these three earthquakes here well below 500 kilometers deep so adding some further strain and stress up here around the tonga area that could increase some volcanic activity and, of course, earthquake activity here around the Kermadec Trench, Tonga Trench area. And, of course, New Zealand sitting right down there uh, along that plate boundary. I'm still expecting something to kick off down there. It's just a matter of time. Japan Trench and the Kurokamachaka. One earthquake here from earlier this morning, it looks like. Uh, this is uh, somewhat deep, 79 kilometers deep there into the Kurokamachaka Trench. This is a major subduction zone here this is no joke this earthquake uh potential has the range of uh well we've seen it back in japan right nine pointer uh this is no joke that's along the japan trench kurokamachaka trench has a greater potential as well uh, and it's been a little while since we've seen the major earthquake activity all right let's go back here to california aside from your typical clear lake volcanic field this is uh, it's a daily thing. The uh, Calpine hydrothermal operations down there is just in full swing. Uh, they produce earthquake activity, but there's a whole process involved in that. Go check it out. 
Um, far as California goes, or Southern California, uh, 1.9 outside the Los Angeles area in the Santa Monica Mountains. The San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet right now. That's the plate boundary here. That's, uh, well, you know, I, I wouldn't want to jump too hard on that plate boundary because it's pretty close, I think, anyway, and producing some, uh, some large earthquake potential. Here around the uh, Anza area, the Ramona Indian Reservation, just outside of this area, looks like we got a little swarm of activity occurring. Well, 13 kilometers deep is the magic number well underneath this area. Um, of course, you know, all these little secondary faults that are um, prior to the plate boundary accumulate, build up strain, not only at the surface, but deeper areas as well. And eventually, the strain will be too much across the plate boundary, and these won't even matter. We'll see that full rupture across the plate boundary take place. Uh, but this deeper activity is definitely a little bit concerning because we see uh, the potential there across the uh, area for some maybe some larger scale movement up here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. If not there, then potentially drifting across the plate boundary here of the San Andreas Fault. It's just uh, the deeper movement quakes there tend to add strain up at the surface. Not really seeing anything major going on here as far as the magnitudes go, but the multitude of earthquakes kicking up there along this segment of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. That's the Anza section. Uh, movement outside the San or the uh, Salton Sea area looks like a 2.6, 6.7 kilometers deep. Not really associated with any uh, fault system, uh, but goodness. Definitely kicking up here. 2.8 as well within this same area. So we know things, generally speaking, if you see swarming here and uh, earthquake activity above 2.5, we know things are straining out here across the southern area of California. Uh, just a matter of time, I think, folks, before that uh, is a, a newsworthy article, meaning the big one. Oklahoma, Texas, uh, it's... It's kind of been hit and miss out here, but we got a pretty good swarm out here be between uh, Union City and down here in the Minco area. Minco, Minco area of Oklahoma. Satellite view. There's uh, obviously it looks like maybe some kind of uh, farmland out here. Now, far as oil fields go, I there's a river. I'm not for sure which river that is. Is that the Red Red River? I don't know. No, I think the Red River is a little bit further down south. But um, a little bit of activity stirring up here. About three kilometers, maybe some down to seven kilometers or so underneath this area of Oklahoma. Again, uncertain on if it's uh, any type of pumping operations out there. But the locals, I think, would be able to give us the indicator of maybe what's going on. All right, backing out of here, backing out, backing up, backing up, as SpongeBob would say. Um, what do we got here? Puerto Rico Trench, one earthquake here, right smack dab on the Puerto Rico Trench. 3.6, 65 kilometers deep there for that earthquake. And uh, South America region here, generally quiet activity for now. Uh, let's back out here on the globe and see what we got. A couple earthquakes around the Ecuador area, it looks like. Um... Goodness, is this the last 24 hours of earthquake activity? It looks super quiet. This, some of this is older movement. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. Solomon Islands, uh, this earthquake from noon, pretty shallow, about 25 kilometers deep for a 5.3. Um, the last larger scale movement here, hold on a second. Where's that 1.6? See what we got for the last largest scale movement. Looks like that 4.3 there in the Fiji area. So, yeah, I, I keep forgetting to change that. But deeper activity, bouncing back and forth here with the surface. Um, yeah, we'll definitely watch the Tonga area here. But that's the last earthquake in this area, 4.3. Pretty deep movement. Got to watch the strain out here. Definitely some stress out here over the last... Uh, couple days we really haven't seen any major movement this is the last seven days 2.5 and above New Zealand 
you got to be on guard out there. Between the activity between Australia and the plate boundary, that's an obvious sign of strain along the Alpine Fault. We've seen some deeper movement quakes here into the, uh, I believe, the, uh, the Hikarangi subduction zone. 185 kilometers deep there into this area. Underneath North Island, that's associated with this uh, subduction zone here. So strain is building up out here. These quiet zones we have to watch sometimes. We're talking about the Krimadek Trench. Look at that. Nothing at all in the last week. That's uh, that's uh, unusual, very unusual. So the, this area here should definitely be on guard. Uh, areas around Papua New Guinea, pretty wimpy in terms of earthquake activity here recently. Uh, that's, that's another area to watch potentially. And we really haven't seen that forward migration here across the Java Trench. Uh, that we expect that momentum to build up here in general plate tectonics that should transfer here. We, we've seen some large activity here recently. Very minimal adjustment across the uh, Java Trench. This activity was very deep here a couple days ago. We had that 7.1, 513 kilometers deep. That's, that's super deep. With only minimal smaller quake activity upstream here along the subduction zone. So I expect this area to fill in. Keep an eye on the Kermadec Trench southward into New Zealand. Far as uh, the Mediterranean goes, it looks like there's some uh, earthquake activity stirring up here in the last 24 hours. With a handful of earthquakes across the uh, Afghanistan, Iraq area, it looks like, and into China. Uh, some deeper movement here into the Mediterranean with that uh, 3.4 raised off the globe. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, calm, and clear. Um, far as space weather activity goes we did see oh man what do we got going on here got a proton event kicking up i'm not for sure where this is coming from out of the blue <laughs> you guys see that just out of the blue we get a proton event unexpected what triggered this um Ah, yeah, of course, of course, of course, says a horse. So, yeah, there was very minimal um, possibilities of a proton event. But we did see here recently, and it's possible it could be from this. We've seen an M flare kick off from this sunspot here. Oh, it's been probably about an hour or so ago. Let me see if Kevin, well, Kevin didn't cover it. Looks like he may be busy or just not around at the time but we did have an M flare event right here notice this M flare kick off a long duration M flare and sometimes those solar protons the charged particles take a little bit not like a CME but uh, uh, a little bit to reach the earth here and it looks like maybe that's going to be the effects of that M flare uh, that kicked off at the polar regions here noticing uh, northern and the southern areas seeing that elevated proton event in the ionosphere uh, affecting potentially the low frequency and the high frequency navigation systems that's about it and of course those uh, like me and missy mimi's that may be sensitive uh, to the earth changes here um, i'm pretty certain that's what that's from here we can still see just a little residual flaring going on here from that sunspot which is uh number Let's see, number 3413, which it, obviously it looks like it's grown pretty drastically here over the last 12 hours since my last update. Notice a lot of blue, orange, this whole area, right? Soon as it gets out of view, guess what? Bada boom, bada bang, It time to party. Who cares about the earth, right? We're out of view, let's bring on the X flares. It's always that way, it seems odd. That these sunspots, as soon as they get the earth-facing side, they either dwindle, dwindle away, like these sunspots here that we've been watching. These were active over here on the eastern limb, and now they're just, they're, it's, a, it's a graveyard of sunspots. And these were as well. They, they were pretty well behaved over the last few days as they uh, traveled here across the disk of the sun, earth-facing side. And now that they're out of view, so to speak, they're ramping up. Same with this one. I don't know what's going on here, but somebody is in charge of uh, the programming out here. 
So, if this thing did blast off a CME, as far as the CME goes, it's not Earth directed, but the protons are definitely uh, look like they were uh, they're affecting the Earth right now from that uh, somewhat of a long duration M flare. But uh, whew. flaring, I, I, as far as these sunspots go, not a whole lot of potential. This one may produce some more. Obviously, once a party. Uh, we're looking at potential of 65% chance of a C flare, M flare at 20, X flare around 5% chance with a proton event. Yeah, we're already there. 100% chance right now, kicking up there across the uh, polar regions. Uh, there's really, again, there's really not a whole lot of potential with these fl with these uh, sunspots. They are pretty stable, and it's a graveyard out here, at least on the eastern edge here of the sun there's not a whole lot coming around the bend either all right uh real quick glance here at uh is uh dahlia still out there hello dahlia are you still out there well it's post tropical cyclone dahlia right it's expected to strengthen back into potentially a tropical storm here as it enters into you know somewhat warmer waters out here around bermuda area area uh, which is under a tropical storm warning currently. But as uh, far as threats out here to the uh, eastern portion of the country, well, that's not an issue. Uh, there's a Dahlia kicking off the eastern portion of the, uh, the states there. And that's expected to be caught up there across the area of the Atlantic and uh, be further drifted off out of screen, out of view, out of sight, out of mind far as california goes um you know we got some rainfall coming up here tomorrow it looks like let me show you guys here real quick regions south and hey, we're back here let's go back here to the uh southwest there we go so this is uh coming in tomorrow there's a low pressure system coming in it looks like it's going to bring some rainfall measurable rainfall here across northern california hopefully putting out some of these fires that are brewing out here across southern oregon and northern california we need it let's uh let's put those fires out but notice the circulation pattern here we got a uh, low pressure system along with a, a high pressure that kind of wants to jump in there and put a squash to it but it looks like some of this rainfall uh will be accumulated there across northern california tomorrow with the chance of thunderstorms the mesoscale here far as the nam model this is a uh, pretty much a radar potential predicted view here uh looks like chico area redding may get some rainfall as well notice that uh band of rain brewing up here in northern california um and a little bit later i think we, well, look at that low pressure just kind of spinning there over northern california we may have a chance of uh, thunderstorms there with that type of setup notice that counterclockwise ro rotation that's a low right over northern california either way um it's supposed to be 75 degrees tomorrow Woo 75 i'm not talking about 110 or 100 like we have been experiencing all summer long 75 degrees here where i live I i'm gonna brag i have to brag because i'm gonna open my windows and uh, just enjoy the weather tomorrow temperature wise let me show you guys here this is uh right now what do we i got 70 degrees here in my backyard i that may be off a little bit uh, it looks like 80 in Chico. I don't think it is because I have 70 here right now in my backyard just outside of Chico. And uh, so that may be just a little bit over uh, board. But it looks like tomorrow, um, 4 p.m. or so, these guys are showing low 80s. This is the ECM WF model. The uh, HRRR model eh, still showing roughly the same, I think. All right, everything just went kaput. Are we still live? 60 frames a second, um, uh, 10,000 KBs a second there. I think we're okay. Just looks like this uh, went kaput. Okay, I'm gonna move on. 
I'm actually I'm gonna kill that window there because when things hang up it makes me a little nervous there it makes me think that there's a uh, a back door somewhere oh goodness almost everything seems like it's froze up here you guys see that look at that every single window I have here is pretty much froze up but we're still running right we are still live nothing wants to work yeah let me wait somebody is kind of messing with my system right now I think here right because we we're working perfectly and now all of a sudden it's just nothing let me close this window here real quick I'm gonna close the complete window actually there it almost looks like there's a couple windows open Thanks there, Timothy, for uh, for letting me know what's going on. Um, I don't even know how this window got opened, to be honest. So I'm going to close this here real quick because I did not put out a, uh, a chat like that. I did not put out the chat window. Let me close that down real quick. Actually, let me bring this open, see if we got things going back up. Why is this... <laughs> Woo! Cuckoo! Cuckoo! We're looking at uh, a full moon, right? Or at least very close to that full moon. I think a full moon was last night. But look how fast it is now. We're running super speed, so to speak. I mean, I have a well over a gigabyte speed here as far as internet connection goes. So that was odd. Makes me think that somebody's messing around there. So, Okay, either way, Storm Prediction Center. We'll go back here real quick. Uh, not a whole lot of severe weather potential. Thunderstorm activity, very minimal as well. But uh, I, I don't know. That's just weird, guys. The only thing I'm happy about, look how fast it is now. Look how quick everything loads. So something was going on. I, I don't know if it's in the, the settings or what, but everything had froze up as far as the windows go. And now we're just, we're, we're boom very quick you guys see that so all right anyway <laughs> it never fails we'll catch you guys uh we'll definitely catch you guys back out here tomorrow um got a lot going on as far as my schoolwork goes i'm sorry i haven't put out the hundred thousand subscriber giveaway yet we are we're getting we're getting uh ready to post up that video so bear with me as i um I get that video up but I the first couple weeks of school the fall semester are they overload the students uh, with their work and I've just been pounded with a bunch of essays a bunch of quizzes a bunch of lectures everything due like immediately so I've been non-stop with that right now um, but I will focus um, when I get the chance to put out that 100,000 subscriber giveaway video and giveaway um, coming up here for, uh, you know, for that contest coming up. So we will get it. That's uh, it's still there. But I got to focus primar primarily right now on, uh, you know, schoolwork. I got to keep that going. All right, folks, I'm jumping off here. Um... What do we got here? 3.8 Indonesia. New Z what do we got? Anything major going on across New Zealand, Timothy? I don't think so. Um, a couple smaller earthquakes down here. But generally, the Kermadec Trench has been relatively quiet. This this EMSC model, I, I, I still don't like it. I miss the old model. But uh, either way, we will catch you guys back here a little bit later. Uh, Mount St. Helens, of course. Keep an eye on that with the um, earthquake activity. New Zealand, I think we got the New Zealand station in here as well. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Have a good night, guys. Peace out.